science actually has the power to to um, to transform our understanding of the of the natural world. Um, and citizens have been contributing to science for decades. And it became a program that was adopted by expedition cruise ships because the scientists could not go to places that the ships could go and collect the data for such a long period of time. So um, a lot of ships in the Arctic and the Antarctic use citizen science programs to actually collect data for research projects, but they involve the guests in it. And I think it's a brilliant way to keep that light bulb shining and to engage people in a very transformative and curious way to help them understand the places that we travel to. So um, Hilda and I both have experiences doing this on expedition cruise ships. And when we started Hearts in the Ice, we, we just picked up the telephone and called um, um, people that we knew at Scripps, people that we knew at the Norwegian Polar Institute. And we said, we're going to be in one location for nine months, can we help you? Um, ice core samples, phytoplankton. Um, they were ecstatic actually. And so we, um, we bit off a big piece of the stake here um, by having nine different projects that we were involved in. To live here in the Arctic, to overwinter and experience time standing still, is to lose your thinking mind to regain your senses. It is to live as one with the cold, dark, simple existence. Welcome to Bamsebu. This is an old trapper's hut built back in 1930 for uh, uh, beluga hunting. <clears throat> and this has been our home now. We are both experienced seasoned polar explorers and guides. And we both have decades of experience living in and working in cold climates. We're out here on a lunch break, and it, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the way. Both of us already knew a few key researchers studying the polar regions, so we just reached out to see if we could be of help. This is Base Camp Bumsabu, and this is our citizen science lab. We're collecting data for eight international research projects up here. The goal is to engage the public and use the data collected to increase overall knowledge on a given subject. This is an ice core uh, drill, and we bring this out with our Lynx snowmobile out on the ice and we drill two of these holes in the ice. The centimeters that's closest to the ocean, that's most important for the scientists because in there small um, organisms and larvae are having their first stadium of life. And most of what we are collecting you can barely see like microscopic algae under the sea ice yet it is connected to a web of life that is part of such a delicate balance, like spokes in a wheel. And now they, the scientists, are understanding that there are a few spokes out of alignment and things are out of balance. Right now there's absolutely no ice at the end of November. And last year there was almost a full fjord of ice. And here comes the drone in for its little landing. We have been able to walk along uh, the open ocean, along the beaches and pick up debris. This is a, uh, a bird, a dead bird. And we often find these nets with the uh, reindeer antlers because they itch in their antlers and they get stuck in it, into it and they pull this around until they can't pull anymore or maybe it's frozen or it's stuck somewhere and they, they starve to death. Life here is challenging. The darkness, the isolation, coming back from a scooter ride to find a massive polar bear on your doorstep, a meter away from your dog. The ice conditions, being in a boat and the engine not functioning. What do you do? Waking up after a storm and discovering that the front door has several meters of snow drift in front of it, and you absolutely cannot get out. 
We celebrate the small joys here every single day, and we make sure to acknowledge each other's efforts. Kind words and a smile go a long way in this world of isolation. <laughs> it just felt like an old horse. <laughs> there is absolutely no sign of a global pandemic where we are. It's surreal to think that the world is spinning off its axis just thousands of kilometers away, and we feel so extremely privileged to be exactly where we are. We care deeply about our planet, our natural spaces, our people, our animals, so we're working to protect what we love. Our goal has always been to take people out of climate despair and into climate optimism, which is about hope and action. Life is good here at Bumsabu. Life is as good as we make it. Absolutely. Right? Climate change does not take a break, so neither are we.